the film for you guys, but today we are on August, what's today's date? I don't know, I'll put it in on the screen what day it is, but I'm going to a doctor's appointment um, today that got changed. It was supposed to be Friday. Okay, Friday is the 20th, so it's the 19th today. It has to be August 19th. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to, if I look crusty, I'm sorry. It's early in the morning. I'm going to a doctor's appointment that they changed to Thursday to see some updates about me and having the baby. Um, I'll update you guys after I get updates at the doctor's office. Hopefully, I'm not going to be late. I feel like I am, but it's going to be okay. But yeah, just wanted to tell y'all that, and I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back to explain what I didn't explain yesterday that I was supposed to explain. Well, it's so funny, man. My husband's over here laughing at me. Um, So, this week, okay, let me start from the beginning. So, I was supposed to be induced on August 25th, but um, this week I have went to the, what, the doctor on Monday and then on Wednesday, they called me because I was supposed to have a, a um, appointment Friday with them. And um, I'm 37 weeks now. So I was supposed to have a meeting, uh, appointment with them on Friday, but they wanted to move it to Thursday. Called, got it switched to Thursday. Then my doctor called me back and was like, hey, so yeah, we were trying to switch you um, to Thursday. And um asking me if the specialist I've been seeing has said anything to me about um, having the baby even earlier the next Wednesday or going in to get induced earlier the next Monday and I was Wednesday and I was like no um they haven't said anything and she was like well we had a meeting or whatever because they have a meeting about high-risk patients um a high-risk patient because of the gestational diabetes and high blood pressure we had a meeting and um, we wanted to see about you coming in on Thursday for your appointment instead and then sending you to the hospital to be induced. I said, what? No. No. Why? What's happening? So <clears throat> it's because I was showing signs of possibly getting preeclampsia, which is not good. Um, could be bad for me. Could be bad for baby. But I was like, my husband's not home yet. He's supposed to be home on Monday. He's home now, y'all. But he's supposed to be home on Monday. I don't want to go in the hospital and have the baby before he gets here. But, you know, if I ne if I definitely have to, I would have had to go because safety. But they were like, okay, well, what we're going to do is have you come in on Thursday for your appointment. We'll redo some tests, check to see, um, make sure baby's okay and everything, all that. Um, so meanwhile, then I called my husband and I was like, oh my gosh, can you come home earlier? So he was able to be like, he could come here Friday morning. So I'm like, okay, that's great. So I went to my appointment Thursday. They reran tests. He looks fine. He always looks fine when they check him. Um, baby Jaden. So he was fine. Um, but they were like, they'd rather not wait. And then like, I just all of a sudden developed like the severe preeclampsia. So I was like, well, husband's going to be home Friday. Um, so since we couldn't do Thursday, they wanted to do Friday. So right now it is Friday and they're supposed to call me and tell me and him when to come on over there. I already picked him up um, since he got here this morning, picked him up. And then once they call, we're going to go over to the hospital to for me to get induced. So that's what's happening. I'm getting induced at 37 weeks. Um, they said his weight is fine. And I mean, there's always could be complications with getting induced and stuff. But I pray against that. I rebuke it. And um, I really hope I don't have to have a C-section. But I mean, if in the end it comes down to that, then I'll have to get one. But hopefully not. Um, so yes, getting induced at 37 weeks. We already have the bags packed and stuff. So once they call, we'll make our way over there and I will keep you guys updated. This is more so of a video for, well, it'll be a video for women that want to know how it is to get 
induced and like maybe um sorry my lips peeling Ugh. so maybe a woman that has to get induced because the same thing like possible pre preeclampsia or because of gestational diabetes or because of high blood pressure this is a video for y'all to to see how it goes and um or if you just want to know what stop staring at me what labor is like this is gonna be a video for that and this is also for because only me and my husband could go in the hospital this is also for our, like our family and stuff so you guys can see what went on behind the scenes with everything since you guys can't be there so this for y'all um i will check back in probably once they call for us to go in maybe that's when i'll check back in um because that's what i'm waiting on right now they just have to see um let us know when a bed is available because they don't want me showing up at the hospital and then there's nowhere for us to go and then we're just waiting um to be put in a room so waiting for them to notify me that there's a room and i'll let you guys know then all right hey guys welcome back it's very next day august 21st so um yes sun sun um so they had me call this morning called this morning left a voicemail for the doctor and doctor um was in a c-section so she texted back and was like i'll call you an hour while she was doing that i took my blood pressure it was it was high it was like 153 over 95 so by the time she called me she's like how's everything how's your blood pressure i told her what it was she was like oh that's higher than even usual because i have high blood pressure higher than usual for you so she was like no need to prolong we're gonna go ahead and get you in she's at the, uh, another location for the hospital but there's another doctor over at the location i'm going to and she said she'll be to my location later but she said i could go ahead me and husband head over there start um setting up getting set up i'm nervous y'all so i'm trying to stay calm because you know this first time pushing out baby so um she said head on over there and then i had checked my blood pressure again and it was went up to 167 over 91 so i think it's definitely a good idea my friends is texting me and stuff like trying to uh, get updates so i'm uh, trying y'all who watch this vlog we're trying to get ready so we can go to the hospital so i'll update y'all as soon as possible but this is for all our family mom-in-law mom that can't be in there with us we vlogging this for you guys so you could see the experience with us you could you could vlog yourself too y'all yeah, yeah, know what time it is baby time turn the um, thing so you can see yourself oh well you know she had a fancy he camera little, he had, he hold on y'all so we gotta open like this so. yep oh you see yourself yep we're gonna go do this baby stuff you know what i'm saying get ready for it yeah she nervous i am all jittery but you know i'm ready I'm ready for sun sun you know what i'm saying we're gonna get lit yeah, my mom came. They got a restriction on how many people can be in there, so it's just me and her. And the PS5, you know. But we are, we, we, we definitely finna get ready, and uh, we'll get back with y'all. Let's get it. Hey guys, update on my phone, cause the camera's in the car. There goes baby. Um, so I got here to the hospital now, child, and they're like, um. Were you scheduled to be induced? I'm like, I was scheduled to be induced, but like next week. But I was like, they moved it up because my blood pressure and stuff. And I was like, the doctor just told me to come here. So I'm here. And so they're like, okay. And they're trying to contact her, but I'm pretty sure she's busy. And so um, now I have to wait for them to come have a moment to take my vitals. And then they said, as far as induction, I would not be able to get induced until later tonight, which, I mean, that's fine. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't be able to get induced until later on tonight. So, as of right now, I'm just here waiting for them to take my vitals or something. So, hanging out, chilling. Hopefully that won't take long, and hopefully they're not going to try and send me home because I'm like, okay, yesterday, I know y'all was full, but today, I was like, the doctor told me to come in here, so I'm here. Yesterday, they told me not to come in because the beds were full, but 
I'm here today. I drove all the way over here. Don't send me home. I'm not driving back. It me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be back keeping y'all posted on what's happening. I'm already nerve-wracked, and now I'm more nerve-wracked. Got to sit here waiting to see if I'm going to even get called back or anything. I'm just like, oh. All right, guys. Quick update, guys. I'm in a triage room, and they're doing, like, tests to see if I'm going to stay here. So they took blood. They are monitoring the baby, monitoring my blood pressure. I'm just laying here because they said the baby's sleepy, so they want him to move around. JJ's over there. And camera's still in the car, so you're going to see, like, higher quality video and lower quality video. This is on my phone, so it might be coming through as lower quality, but just laying here. We'll see what happens. Um, hopefully they don't send me home. I don't know. But, all right, I'll be back. I just want to do another update. Y'all, child, I had caught a Charlie horse in my arm. And part of my back. Terrible. Terrible. Um, JJ went to go get us some food. And the nurse said most likely they're not going to end up, like, sending me home or anything. So probably here to stay hopefully um and they, but they still wouldn't induce me till later tonight so instead of like right now or anything it would be later tonight um jesus my arm that was crazy um but i'm just waiting for him now he's gonna go get the food and i'll be here all right Hey guys, I don't know what the last update is. Um, somebody better come in here. Anyways, I don't know what the last update was that I gave. Uh, that sound that you hear is because my blood pressure got taken. And I think the bottom number was a little high. So it dings when one of the numbers is high. Um, I don't even remember what I told y'all. If I keep repeating stuff, maybe I'll cut some clips. But... Someone come in here. Um, I think I told you they don't really plan on sending me home. Um, doctor just had checked me, and she said that so I'm like two centimeters. My cervix is still soft. They might not have to do the cervidil, which is what they do to make your cervix favorable to start induction. Um, she said they may not have to do that, and I may just get to go to Pitocin, which is the medication that they use to kickstart labor and stuff. So she said that would be great for me if that's the case because it's faster. It will still take like a, at least like 24 hours probably for me to have baby, but that'd be great if I don't have to wait, get my cervix um, favorable and then um, get Pitocin. Um, so I just finished eating. JJ had went got to some Chick-fil-A. I had a salad from there. He had his sandwich meal. There he is over there. So I got you on camera. I do. You do. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, waiting. I think they may or may not have a room for me already. So they were, I think they were waiting for me to finish my lunch. And then they were going to move me. And then... Um, also, I asked the nurse, she said I could eat up until they start the, I think until they start the Pitocin. So, we'll see about that. That's why I just was like, I'm going to eat as much as I can. So, I won't be starving throughout labor. I keep looking to see if they're coming in here. Because I don't know if we could film most hospitals. I don't think let you film stuff. But, um... Yeah, that noise is driving me crazy. It's probably driving y'all crazy in the background of this video. But I'm trying to keep y'all updated. Especially family and stuff that's going to be watching this. Um, so yeah, just sitting here. She said, I've been having contractions, if I haven't said that already. And that I'm probably just not feeling it. I think I've been feeling it because I feel my stomach when it's tightening and a little cramping. But yeah, I am 
still nervous because it's my first time having a baby. I was nervous about pushing the baby out and stuff and how that's gonna go. And I already told them, I was like, I'm thinking about my epidural already, guys. And they were like, wait till you're in, in an active labor. I'm like, okay, I want it. I want it as soon as I can because I'm not trying to feel contractions for nobody. I'm not a hero. All right. I'm not trying to save nobody out here. But all right, I'll check back in later. I know this sound is annoying. Sorry. Hey, y'all. <clears throat> I'm back. I forgot about filming. What I, did I, I don't even think I've filmed since I've been in here. We got moved into a room, a normal room. And, oh, Jesus. Almost knocked my phone off. Got moved into a labor and delivery room. Got my IV put in. Feels weird on my hand. They tried putting it in my left hand. And didn't work um so they had to do it in my right hand and i'm right-handed then i had to sign documents not that fun i keep looking over here at viewfinder instead of looking at y'all sorry this whole vlog um so got my ivy got monitoring on the screen there's somebody else's stuff sorry my hand is shaky um there's somebody else the other patient that the nurse is watching is also up there which i'm like that's weird is that a hipaa violation i don't know um because it has just their their initials and my initials so i'm assuming if they could see mine if i if i could see theirs they could see mine anyways um yeah so not on pitocin or anything yet you have to wait till the doctor puts in a request for pitocin for me and then once the doctor puts that in then they'll get that started i've been having braxton hicks still um from the last time they checked the two centimeters they didn't check again yet and um so when they start the pitocin i'll let you guys know i am terrified for them to start the pitocin because i'm gonna have to start feeling like real actual contractions which i haven't felt oh getting a braxton hicks though it doesn't hurt it's just like oh my stomach's tightening um so yeah haven't gotten real contractions or whatever would be considered real contractions yet so once i get the pitocin that's probably gonna kick in and i'm like terrified but i already told them i want an epidural and stuff it's shaking because i'm filming with my left hand i can't film with my right hand because i don't want to hold it with this my hand feels weird um i was feeling a little sleepy i don't think i want to take a nap though but then maybe i should take a nap before i start getting pitocin i don't know child it's 5 19 p.m and um oh blood pressure hold on okay that blood pressure was good if it's bad it'll um start going off sorry but i switched hands so now i'm gonna be in this weird position talking to y'all and i'm keeping it in this other hand because it was too much for me to switch hands so um yeah um i was talking to the nurse about epidural right and like because everybody I've been talking to, my friends included, that have had babies, they're like, um, yeah, go ahead and get it or ask for it as soon as you want it because you don't want to be wanting it and they can't have it. So I'm like, okay, we're wanting it and it'd be an excruciating amount of pain. So what I did, I was asking the nurse, I was like, okay, so as far as the epidural, when would you suggest I get it? She was telling me it could last for 18 hours, is what they normally say, like the one drip that they put in. And for me, because I have high blood pressure, I didn't know this, I have to get labs done first before, and then the anesthesiologist has to look at my labs and then say that I can get the epidural. So that better go well, because I want that. I'm not, I'm not doing that without the epidural, Jesus. So they have to do labs for me. And then she was like, also, she was like, <sighs> she wouldn't suggest getting it too soon when I'm not even really feeling anything because for some people it could, like a woman, it has like, when it gets really intense, now the epidural is not working for them, which I also don't want. I want it to work through the labor you know 
And um, so I'm gonna try not to get it too early, but I'm trying not to get it too late either because she was like, she was like, then there's also the fact that like you could go from three centimeters to 10 centimeters already and then you can't get it. She was like, so she was like, she wants me to do it at a point where I'm in pain, but not excruciating pain where I cannot sit still to get that epidural because I have to sit still to be able to get it. So in pain, but not excruciating pain where I can't sit still while they do the epidural. And she was telling me it takes like 20 minutes for them to set it up. And that, um, cause I was like, is there a specific time I should suggest it? Cause the anesthesiologist might not be available. She was like, anesthesiologist could be available right at that moment or could be given another patient. It all depends. But she was like, just don't wait till you're in a ridiculous amount of pain because then I could be like too many centimeters dilated and can't get it. And I'm like, I understand. So I'm just sitting here trying to like think in advance of like what would be good timing but i guess i won't know that until i start feeling contractions like i won't be able to guesstimate what good timing is for me to get the epidural so i guess i'll just show you guys as i progress and when the pitocin is here y'all i'm terrified of getting of having like normal contractions i'm that's like Besides getting checked, which is not fun. I don't know if I've mentioned that at all in this vlog. Getting checked is not fun. It gives you, it feels like to me, it gave me like period cramps when they checked me. Every time they checked me, I'm talking on the vlog. So the first time they checked me, which was on Thursday when I was in the doctor's office, felt like I was having some harsh period cramps it made me want to throw up too sorry if it's tmi but it made me feel like i want to throw up and but this time when the doctor checked me in the hospital it wasn't as bad i guess because i knew what i expected now for checking i, I don't know if that's it or if just her, she just does it differently but um yeah when she checked me it was fine I still got the period cramps she did it really fast so I try to make sure I breathe and then like clench up away from her, move so that she can go ahead and get it done. And that's how she told me that I was two centimeters and my cervix was still soft and um, that I think she said 70% effaced, whatever that means. And um, I might not need to get the medicine i think i already told you guys this but i'll tell you again i might not need to get the medicine that they would normally give to you to soften your cervix if if i keep like being in a good spot like that they could just go ahead and start pitocin instead which will start off the contractions which could make like this hospital stay shorter because if I have to get the Cervidil to soften my cervix, that makes this whole process longer because my cervix has to be favorable for them to start labor. That's what they have to make sure of or else doing the Pitocin, there's no point in that. So hopefully I'm still favorable and then they can start the Pitocin, the scary part, and then we can see about epidural later which is another scary thing for me because I don't like needles, but, and I want it to, I want to make sure it works and works well and works throughout the entire thing, entire labor, but I'll catch back up with you guys. I feel like I'm rambling now. JJ is over there playing the video game. Um, I'll show y'all him in the room because I haven't showed y'all this room. Let me flip this. So I can see where I'm pointing you. There he is. I'm sitting here. My iPad's in front of me. My water. But he's over there. Playing the game. Playing Monster Hunter. Um, but yeah, this is the room. So he's over there. There's a couch right there that he'll be sleeping on. Right there. And then the baby... That's the incubator for them to put him in or whatever thing. I don't know what that's called. For them to put him in once he's born. There's a TV up there. That's an incubator? For real? Oh. And then the bathroom's over there. There's a shower and a toilet in there. 
and then my IV and stuff is right here. Um, oh, but they did have me fill out paperwork. Oh, let me turn y'all back over here. They did have me fill out paperwork um, earlier in regards to what I want to do. They asked me my birthing plan. Like, uh, I was like, epidural is part of my birthing plan. And they asked me about breastfeeding. I want to told them I want to try breastfeeding. They asked me if I want to do skin to skin. I say yes. So when they're doing skin to skin, they do 30 minutes of skin to skin. And me and JJ get to do it. Um, they do 30 minutes of skin to skin. Um, I don't know if that whole 30 minute part is just on me or with me and him, but during that 30 minutes, they're going to help me with trying to start breastfeeding. Then that's when they, after that, after they do the skin to skin, that's when they take him over there to the incubator and start doing everything else. And then they don't wash him, give him his first bath here. Ugh, another Braxton Hicks. Um, they don't give him his first bath here until after 12 hours. And then they'll... Um, I have a baby book, so they take his footprints and put it on this one document that they gave us. So I asked them, can they do his footprint and put it in our book for him? And they say yes. So they're going to do that. I just have to mark the page and where I want his feet. And yeah, it looks like it's about to rain outside. But okay, now I'm really about to go. Unless I remember something else, then I'll be back on here. But all right, guys. Back again, y'all. Um, so they ended up coming in here. Well, my nurse, she ended up coming in here and said they talked with the doctors. And okay, so there's a scale. Um, I can't think. I was. I know what the scale is called that they go by for whether my cervix was favorable enough to just start the pitocin or not. And I can't think of the name of it, but um, I would need it to at least be an eight. I was a seven, y'all. A seven, one off from being favorable enough to just be able to start the Pitocin so instead of starting the Pitocin they gave me a medicine that they put up inside behind my cervix I don't even know how they know they're reaching behind there but they know <laughs> are you laughing at me I don't know how they know they're reaching behind there but they know that they reaching up in there and behind so let me let me see what it's called means. I'm trying to see. Mesoprostol. I'm sorry, I went quiet for a second. I was looking up the name. They put mesoprostol up. Every time I start this, I keep forgetting that my blood pressure is about to go. 138 over 83. Okay, sorry. So, what was I saying? My blood pressure thing keeps coming on every time I go to vlog. It comes on every hour, and then if my blood pressure was bad, then they do another one in 15 minutes after that. So, mesoprosol is what they put up behind my cervix, and that, she said, it's a really tiny pill. She showed me it, and it takes, um, like, 30... 30 minutes to dissolve so I would have to wait 30 minutes before I get up and use the restroom but I think it's been 30 minutes since she did it but um they put that up there and that's to help soften my cervix a little bit more and then they check me in four hours to see if it did what it needed to do and if it did they'll start the pitocin she also told me that that can also trigger labor as well so if that were to trigger my labor on one hand they wouldn't even start the pitocin for me because my labor would have already started so we'll see how this goes i'm still like on the verge of like oh my gosh scared to feel that first contraction contraction but um that's where we're at right now so i ended up having to get that instead of going straight to um pitocin um but it's okay it's fine. We fine. Um, 
think that was the only update. By the way, when when this thing starts taking my blood pressure on my left hand where she first did try to do the IV, every time the blood pressure cup starts going off, that area starts hurting me because it's squeezing the blood in my arm. But sorry for the triple chin. Anyways, this is this is me. Natural. I didn't bring no makeup for birth or after birth, so I'm gonna still look like this after that too. All right, y'all. I'll be back. Hey guys, update. I'm still doing fine. I just had me. Uh, they said I could eat something light, so I had a half of a sandwich and some Lay's baked chips. I'm not really following my gestational diabetes. Um, food thing diet in here because it's hard to do that in the hospital because I can't like plan out and make my meals. I might be able to get stuff from. Ooh, let me pause this. I might be able to get stuff from like the cafeteria, but I don't know. They didn't give me no menu for the cafeteria, so I'm not sure about the cafeteria. But um, if it said eat something light, because if I eat something heavy. I might regret it later because the pain and hormones, I guess, can make you throw up and stuff later. So, I was like, okay. So, they suggested a sandwich or a soup or salad. So, I got a sandwich and I ate half of it. And that was pretty good for me. And then some, a little bag of chips. And I've been drinking water today. So, um, yep. So, they'll check me again at nine to see if I need either to see what's next. So either it's gonna be I'm gonna need this some, is Okay. So either it's gonna be I'm gonna get some more the meat supposed whatever or or I'm assuming put or I'm assuming there'll be Pitocin. I don't know which one it's gonna be yet. And um then she's gonna do after she checks me and sees what's what has to happen with that then she'll do labs so redo my labs so that I can have another six hour window so that if I do start going into labor or something during that time like after labor then I'll already have my labs done for six hour window for the um, anesthesiologist to look at for if I want my epidural so that way I won't have to wait to do some I keep looking at the viewfinder to look at myself um, so that way I won't have to do wait to do labs and then get that for and stuff. So, yep. Um, that is all and I'll catch up with you guys again in a little bit. Like, maybe an hour. Because that's when she'll check me. In like an hour. It's 8.05 right now. She's supposed to check me at 9 something. So, oh, and... They had a shift switch for my nurse, so got my new nurse in here. So, yes, that's who will be doing it. Hopefully, she's as gentle as that other lady. All right, I'll be back. Filming on my phone real quick, y'all, because I don't feel like I'm not sitting up to get my camera. I'm laying on my side. The real contractions have started. So, I'm just laying on my side right now. I'm not getting up to get that camera. Just wanted to update y'all that the real contractions have started. And I'll be back, possibly. Okay. Get the red button. Okay, now we're recording. Now we're recording. All right, how you feeling? Um, I've just been having contractions that I'm trying to deal with. And trying to time it to get my epidural correctly. Um, my new nurse said it doesn't wear off, so she took. I thought the lady said it wore off. That's, that's, what said, right? that's, what, that's what she said. She said like 18 hours, right? That's what she said, she right? Was, she was saying they say it lasts for 18 hours. But that, my other doctor, my, the doctors told me, like my OBGYN said, it doesn't wear off until they stop it. Okay, then we could. Then. I thought she said it wear off. That's why I was like, make sure you get it at the right time because you, you know how you know. Mm -hmm. Pumping it, it's supposed to be a nerve block, so it's supposed to block it until mm -hmm. they stop pumping it. But, um, 
I have to wait an hour for them to get my result back from the lab that they just did. They started me on Pitocin. Pitocin? So. They had to put up her, her hoo ha. No, nah, not the Pitocin. Oh. Put them in, exactly. Up there. The Pitocin is in this right now. It's that bag. Up oh, there. okay. So that's Pitocin. So I got two of these. And that, and, and that what makes the baby, uh, that get what you. makes the um, labor contraction. Okay. So, yeah, guys, that's what Pitocin is. Okay. So, she said every 30 minutes she'll increase the dosage. So, in 30 minutes she'll, I guess, come back and put it up. Mm hmm. More. And if I need something to intervene before I can get my epidural, I'm going to ask for some pain medicine or something. But right now I'm just trying to. No muster through it. Can you got this big dog? Um, feels like Charlie Horse slash butt cramps. Not butt cramps. Oh. <laughs> period cramps. Oh, period cramps. And at the same time, so it's not fun. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to vibe. If that's our nurse. Hey. Hey. Ask. I'm sorry. Ask first. Yeah, she she chilling. I'm mm. okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. I have a little piece of paper. <laughs> All right, guys, filming on my phone because the camera's over there on that thing, and I'm facing this way because mm -hmm, got my epidural, and so I can't roll over that way. Um. About to try and take a nap because in 45 minutes they'll come back in here and roll me back to the other side to make sure that the epidural is going to both sides but I'm tired I'm not sleeping long last night and so I'm gonna try and sleep and they gave me a button to press if I need more epidural, like if it starts to wear off or something. Um, hopefully not. Um, but if it does start to wear off, I tell the nurse first before I push the button to get more so she can assess what the pain is. Um, they had to put a catheter I mean, when they do the epidural, it, that's a catheter too, but it's in your back. Then they had to put a catheter in my, um, in me to use the restroom because I can't get up. I'm tired, y'all, because I can't get up to go to the restroom. So they had to put a catheter in for that. So... I'm gonna now try to sleep and because I feel like I'm falling asleep right now feminist but just wanted to update y'all oh still three centimeters at 80 percent but I don't man those I was starting to feel those contractions I don't know if it was the Pitocin because Pitocin can have you start feeling the loss of contractions that does not mean you're dilating a lot or nothing and it could be heavy contractions and stuff so I went ahead and got the epidural I just want his heart rate and all that to stay up and they're gonna keep checking my blood pressure to make sure it doesn't drop because the anesthesiologist his main thing was he doesn't want my he didn't want my blood pressure to suddenly drop because that's what an epidural could do. It could cause hypotension instead of hypertension. I have hypertension, but it could have still dropped mine. And he said, like, the baby's used to me having higher blood pressure. So, if it suddenly dropped, that would be, like, not good for him not good for me and they didn't want to have to like rush me to do no c-section because of that so he had them give me some the nurse gave me some zofrain um before he did the epidural 
and to try and counteract that because he was saying there's like studies that that helps with uh whatever with hypotension or something oh and did you guys know i learned this from watching youtube videos but um so how they monitoring my contractions or whatever and you'll see people in videos talking about like oh look at that hump there you just had a big contraction look at that hump oh that was a that was a hard one so i learned this from watching youtube and then the nurse earlier confirmed it the size of those humps on the contraction um thing does not mean that it's a large contraction at all that's not what that means i forgot what it means but what this thing is doing is actually just measuring how far apart they are and how long they are but it does not say it's not telling you how strong they are so i could have like a small hump on there and for me it's an actual large contraction or something but all right i'll check back in on another occasion and i don't know if we'll film the actual we're not gonna film the actual delivery because they don't allow filming of that but we could i could film afterwards when the baby's out and i can't have jj secretly filming oh blood pressure well, I don't know what happened just now when it's trying to take my blood pressure but now this thing is beeping I don't think it took it properly but what was that saying anyways um, got my epidural the thing up there on the um, contraction monitor doesn't, me doesn't measure how hard they are so I think that's what I was saying other than that, I don't remember. Sorry, guys. I don't know what I was talking about. Anyways, I'll be back when something else is going. Oh, I said I can't film during the delivery. So, I'll film what I can. But I'm not having JJ hide the camera or nothing to try and film sneakily or nothing. So, it'll be what we can get, y'all. All right? Peace. I'll be back. Welcome back, vlog. And my bonnet on it's inside out husband helped me put it on and that's all that matters is it's on my head <laughs> as you can see we're in the daytime now so I don't even know where I left off I should have looked on the camera before hand but last night got my epidural because I was not about to get into even further pain I think I told you guys that and then I didn't really sleep last night at all. Um, ended up having to get like, cause I was got put in like a sitting up position because the epidural was going to only one side of my body. All of a sudden, for some reason, it was not going to my right side. So this morning. And that was that was happening earlier this morning as well, but so that's why I sound really tired and I'm looking real tired. So this morning, my new nurse was here. Um, her and the doctor came in, and I was like, mm, "Well, I think that I need my epidural adjusted or something because." It's only making one side of my body like gelatin. And the other side, I, could, I was able to flip my foot all which way ever I wanted on that side. So, the doctor was coming in with a plan. She was about to check my cervix and go ahead and break my water. And I was like, hmm, before you break my water, should we wait for the anesthesiologist to come down? And then just my epidural because I was like couldn't you break in my water like ramp things up all of a sudden for me if, if that's how my body takes it so she was like mm. first she was like not necessarily but then I'll just go ahead and check you first 
and then see about breaking water. I was like, okay. So she checked me, and then I had only went to like four centimeters at that point. So I'm at four centimeters at that point, and she was like, okay, I'll hold off on breaking your water. <clears throat> so I'm like, okay, Did you listening to me? I am gonna get there. Uh, yep. Mm hmm. You, it's okay. So, um, they got my blood pressure medication, brought that to me for me to take, and then also paid the anesthesiologist that is now on call to come down here. You can't, why is my nose so shiny right there? Mm hmm. So, they paged him. He came down. He it didn't take long to come down. He came down. Came over. And he was like, um, so you're you're it's not working. You're feeling pain. I heard. And I was like, yeah, it's not working on like one side of my body. Sorry guys, I've been like getting like so much pressure from this contraction now that it like feels like pain because it's it's in my rib cage area, so it's not down my stomach area where the epidural is so I'm feeling the one that the part that's up here at the top so he was like you feeling pain and I'm like mm, I'm feeling kind of like I'm, it's like it's not working on the one side of my body it was like I could shake my leg all around and do whatever he was like well you should be able to like a little bit move your leg and stuff but he was like you just had a contraction just now. Did you feel it? Did it hurt? And I was like, yeah, I could feel the end of it. Not the whole, like, super pain. It's not super painful. But I could feel the end of it. So he was like, okay. Um, um, I'll go ahead and give you another dose, a dose real quick. And a dose of medicine real quick. And I'm going to have you turn on your side. Because he's like, that epidural is all about gravity. So whichever side you lay on it could disperse to that side so I was like but that's the side I was laying on last night in the leg should have been numb because I was laying on that side but the other leg got numb so he was like I'm gonna just still have you lay on that side and when I give you this dose of medicine it should work so he gave me the dose and then I was like oh so the button that releases the extra epidural, because I have a button here, I can push it like four times in one hour. So I was like, so the button that releases this extra epidural, are you telling me that basically I could have used that since you just gave me a dose of medicine? He was like, yep, that's specifically what that's for. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. So he did his thing. He left, and then I turned over on my, had my husband help me turn over on my side, and then like 15, 20 minutes later, my leg, um, that side of my body started getting the numbness. Sorry, another contraction, and it's not that it's super painful, cause I have the epidural. It's, it's a little painful at the top, because my rib cage. They probably can't do nothing about that. But it feels like it's going to shatter my ribcage, y'all, for real. So, <clears throat> I was turning my side for a little bit, for like an hour, because he, he was like um, suggesting he wouldn't want me to stay on that side forever, because then my other leg can end up happening where it's like I get all the feeling back or something, which that didn't happen, but he's like, it could happen. So, after I planned after an hour to turn myself back to the middle so after an hour my husband helped me again to turn to the middle and then he put the blanket back over me after he did that and then like right when he sat down I felt like this warm gush 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 and I'm like hmm I was like babe I think 
my water just broke because I just felt like a gush. Can you check? And then he got up to check, y'all. You don't want me to tell y'all this. He got up to check. And I was like, you got to look down in there because I can't myself look. I can't sit up to look. So he looked down in there. And he's like, no, no, your water didn't break, no. And I'm like, hmm, maybe that's the catheter I'm feeling. Just releasing something. And he's like, yeah. And he covered me back up. And then lay back down. And I'm just laying here. And like a few minutes later, the nurse comes back in. And she's like, sorry, I'm in pain up on my rib cage. I'm in pain up here by my rib cage. Anyway, so the nurse was like, oh, I came in here to check you because um, baby's heart rate keeps like dipping a little bit every time you have a contraction. I just want to make sure his head's not getting squeezed or not. And I was like, okay. She was like, because it could be that. And if it's not, then I'm going to need to do something, something, something. So she went to go check me. So she pulled, she pulled the cover back and had me like open my legs. She's like, your water broke. You know that? And I'm like, hmm, my water broke? The water that my husband said didn't break when he checked. Unbelievable. Unbelievable for you. Yes, correct. She was like, oh, the men never can do it they can never check right I'm like oh gosh so <clears throat> she cleaned me up or whatever and then checked me five centimeters now um, I don't know if I progressed some more by now but I was five centimeters at that point and now we're just waiting and she turned me over to another side to see if that'll help with his um, his blood his no his heartbeat and all that dropping a little bit when I'm having contractions. It's not dropping below the gray area that they want him to stay in, so it's not bad, but she just was like wanted to make sure. Anyways, that's the point we're at. I still can't eat till after. And I'll catch back up with you guys. How you feeling? I have a cramp on the side. It's about that time, y'all. Big dog, 10 centimeters and two. Yeah, I'm not a little lingo while I'm in here, you feel me? She a warrior. She got this. Uh, we're gonna cut it short, and uh, hopefully by the end, Jaden will be here and uh, keep you guys updated. Hey vlog, vlogging on my phone right now. Update, had baby Jaden. I don't know even what the last thing I showed y'all was. Cause literally I was going through labor. Um, Oh, I told y'all about the water breaking thing, five centimeters. Then when they came back and checked me again, I was eight centimeters. And then when they came back and checked me a few, like an hour later, 10 centimeters. I don't even know if it was an hour later for the 10 centimeters. Then I was like, started to feel the pain back a little bit when I was 10 centimeters. And that was when I was about to start pushing. But they want me to, they wanted me to kind of feel when I was pushing. And so that was happening. Um, and we couldn't film anyways while I was pushing the baby out. Plus, we had like our parents on. FaceTime watching so yeah preoccupied anyway so they didn't pick up the phone pick up the camera to show anything after I was done either um but 
it, I didn't push for a super long time. It was like a good, I'd say like 45 minutes maybe of pushing. And um, so what else was I going to say? There was that. And um, the best part of it was when his shoulders came out because then he flew out. That was crazy. Anyway, so um, epidural worked. I recommend 10 out of 10. Um, only thing is if you could have the possibility of having how it worked for me and where it was like on one side and then went, um, it was on both sides, but then all of a sudden it will gravitate into just being on one side, which was crazy. But it's still, even though it started gravitating to be on one side, when I was pushing, it still covered me because I tore a little bit and I didn't feel that. So it still covered that area. Um, I did some skin to skin with him, did a little feeding, um, first time feeding with him. And um, then when he peed for the first time, that was crazy for me. I couldn't even feel myself peeing. Um, it was hard out here for a pimp. And um, what else I do? Yeah, they took me to use the restroom and helped clean me up a little bit. And now they brought us up to the third floor, which is the recovery um, part of the um, hospital baby area. It's the baby area. So we're up here. Um, JJ's over in the chair doing skin to skin with the baby because he was cold. So they're doing skin to skin so he can warm up. Baby's sleeping on him. JJ's resting his eyeballs and then the nurse is going to come back in and she said if he would have been like still like turning his head trying to feed she would give him to me to go ahead and try and feed him again but he's like chilling right now so we'll see and then my mom's on her way here so when she gets here we'll see um i gotta order me some food but that is all guys jj finna fall asleep with the baby He's here. I'll show him later. Welcome back to the vlog. Um, or the video for my labor and de delivery vlog. Um, don't mind if I look crusty. Haven't been getting a lot of sleep. But anyways, so a lot has been going on. I don't even know where I left off at. Um, basically, um, I had got discharged from the hospital before Jaden because some things was um, going on that they were checking on for him. So he's been in the NICU. He, he's he been in the NICU since the, um, that night when he was born. So August 22nd, after we had him in the room, like during the day, um, later that night, they had taken him to the NICU and then he's been in the NICU ever since. Um, I'll explain like everything that went on with as far as that um on another video like when I do like a an explanation of my labor and delivery experience and stuff um because I'm gonna do the vlog and do a separate video for that I'll explain everything that happened to him and like why he was in the NICU and all that but um it's been what is it today is the 28th so he's been in there for almost a week because it's Saturday now. He went in, he was born on a Sunday. Um, I'm pretty sure August 22nd was a Sunday, yes. He was born on a Sunday and then he's he was almost been in the NICU for a week. So we've been going to the hospital every day to go see him and um now today they call this morning on the 28th saturday and so we can bring him on home so my husband went to go get the car and then um we're gonna go pick him up um so excited 
I'm so excited because y'all, I had cried when I had to leave the hospital without him, of course. I cried and then I've been trying to hold in my tears ever since. Um, but we finally get to bring him home today. And um super excited about that. So um I'll try and vlog maybe once we get him or once we get home or we'll see how it goes. If not, this would be the end of the vlog. So in case this is it, this is the end of the end of the labor and delivery vlog. Thank you for watching. I hope it was um helpful to um those moms who have not been induced before and stuff, but um I'll be back if this isn't the end of the Back to end off this vlog really quickly. Um, I know I took, it was the day we was going to pick Jaden up. Um, it's two days later, maybe, since he's been home. Here goes daddy. Yo. Baby. But, um, yeah, we're home. So this ends off the labor and delivery vlog. I'll do another video on telling you guys about labor and the labor and delivery, like the story and all of that. Um, besides the vlog, but I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you give it a big thumbs up if you did Make sure that you are also commenting down below for other videos you want to see and Also subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and click the notification bell next to it So you'll get notifications when I upload um, I think that's all so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Brittany and peace out guys